What's up YouTube? This is Dennis Panita for tutorials.eu slash Android. In this video, we're going to look at data types and the ones that are used for numbers specifically like int, float, long and double. And they are really important to store numbers basically inside of variables. And if you haven't checked out the variables lecture, definitely watch that YouTube video first to understand what variables are before jumping into what data types are because you just need to understand that first. So if you think that's a cool idea and you enjoyed this video, hit the like button at the subscribe button and also check out the entire playlist if you missed out any of the videos. So now let's get started. Welcome back. In the last video, we created our first variables and we used immutable variables and we also saw what an immutable variable is. So immutable variable. Now, what I'm using here is a comment. So this here is a comment. This is code that will not be considered by the compiler. So it will not have any influence onto our application or our program. It's just a comment that helps me to understand what my code does. And it also helps other developers to understand what code does. And they are really great to not only understand what code does, but they are also great in order to know what you need to do. So for example, if you add to do, then you know, okay, at this point, I will need to add a functionality, add new functionality, for example. And this is great because then you can go to your to do window here at the bottom and you can very quickly find this. So let's say I go to a different document and I go to my main activity. And now in my to-do, I can simply find my to-do element and it directly goes over to this spot. And this is amazing because it really helps me to navigate through my files. In this case, it's super easy because I only have two documents, but once I have many different documents, this will come in very handy. Other than comments with just two slashes, we can also create multi-line comments by, by using a slash and then a asterisk. And with that, it automatically creates the closing comment or the ending comment, which is an asterisk with a slash. So everything in between here will be a comment. This is a comment. So this is a multi-line comment to be precise, multi-line comment. All right, so just so you know how you can create comments and what they do. So they don't have any impact onto our program, on the execution time, on the compiling time, none of that. It's just for us as a developer. All right, now let's have a look at other variable types. I told you that Kotlin is a typed language. This means that every variable is of a specific type. And type inference is a concept that allows us to just assign a value to a variable and Kotlin will know of which type that variable will be. So for example, it knows that this is of type string. If I create another variable, let's say my age, and I assign 31 to it, then this my age variable will be of type string will be of type int. So this is an int and this year is a string. All right, ints are used for whole numbers and they require a certain amount of space in our memory. For example, an integer requires 32 bits of memory. If we want to use other types, they're available as well. Quick pause. So you're learning something about Android in this video and I hope you enjoy it. If you want to learn everything that you need to know to become a real Android developer, then definitely check out my Android Masterclass because in this course, you're going to build a bunch of great applications along your journey to becoming an Android developer. First, you're going to learn the Kotlin basics. Then you're going to learn to build one app after another. And while you do that, you get a bunch of demos which will really dig deep into the concepts as well as presentations which will help you to understand what you're learning. So don't miss out and get the course right now. You can find the link in the description below. 
So I'm just gonna paste in some other types in here. For example, there is this type called byte. Then there's this type called short, the type called int, and the type called long. And all of them are integer types. And integer types are whole numbers. And each of them requires a different amount of space. So for example, a byte is just eight bits, requires eight bits in the memory. A short requires 16 bits in the memory and 32 bits and long 64 bits. Now here it says the value is out of range. So this value is too long for even a long value. So if you have a very long number, this could be used for example, for a social security number or for a credit card number, then you could use a long. And here, actually it doesn't fit like this anymore. So let's do it like that. And then we have a super long number here. Now you might wonder, where is this byte short int? Where are all of these coming from? Well, they come from me entering them. So here I explicitly say this variable called my byte should be of type byte. How do I do that? Well, I can do that by using the colon and afterwards the type. But of course, if I use a byte type, I can not use a long number because now it will say the integer literal does not conform to the expected type byte. This means that the value that I entered here is so long that it's usually an integer, but we are trying to store it in a byte variable and that doesn't work because an integer needs a lot more space than a byte. So we need to make sure that the value that we assign here is correct. Now at the same time, we don't need to do that. You see, I do that here. I say, this is a byte, this is a short, this is an int, this is a long, but we don't need to do that. You saw it here. I just assigned a value 31 and that will automatically assign the right data type. And usually if you don't explicitly say that you want to have a byte or a short, it will just assign an integer. Kotlin will just assume that this is an integer. How do I know that? Well, you can just enter my age and you can see here on the right hand side that it is an integer. So Kotlin did the magic for us and it automatically assigned the type int, which is called, or this approach here co is called type inference. So it just inferred the type based on whatever value we assigned to it. Of course, if we do so, then we have to assign a value to it. So I cannot just create var my age without assigning a value to it. I need to assign a value to it. There are a bunch of other types as well. So these are the integer types that we looked at. Now let's look at the floating point number types. So there are types which are required for floating point numbers. For example, the floating point number types float, which is a 32-bit data type and double, which is a 64-bit data type. Now here I'm assigning 13.37 oh, to my float variable, which I called my float, but it's still complaining. So what's wrong here? Well, if I assign a floating point value, it usually assumes that I want to assign a double, as we can see here. But if I explicitly only want to use a float, which has a lower range, so which just can't be as long as of a number, then I have to explicitly state that by adding an F at the end. This F stands for float. So I'm just saying, okay, this variable should be of type float or this value that I'm assigning here. So if I should get rid of this, for example, and I now check my float, you will see that it is a float. All right, so if I get rid of this F and I check what my float is, you can see now it's a double. And that has to do with me assigning this F to it and explicitly stating that it should be a float. So if you really need to save space, you can use floats if the numbers are not gonna be huge. But if you need flexibility, long numbers, or you just don't care about space, then you can use doubles. And generally speaking, doubles are preferred by Kotlin or they will be most of the time used if you don't explicitly state that it's going to be a float. Using floats is important, for example, when you develop video games and you want to calculate the physics. 
then having as fast as possible calculations will be more important than having super duper precision. So that's where float comes into play. But most of the times double will be your way to go. All right, so these are the number types, but there are other types as well. 